Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be a lot, but before I get into all that, I'm very happy to announce that this is a collaboration with my friend, the beautiful and talented Michelle from the YouTube channel Shirley Zamoe. I've been a long time viewer of hers and I was very honored to be a guest on her channel in January of this year. We talked about cultural appropriation in K-pop and it's also my first time ever doing a commentary style video. That experience really inspired me to keep doing commentary even on my own channel too. So thank you so much Michelle. I really love her because she is genuinely a sweetheart. So after you watch this video, I hope you hop onto her channel and subscribe. Since this is a collaboration with Michelle, she will be appearing in my video and I will be in hers. The link will be in the description down below and in the iCard above. Finally, before I get into today's topic, I want to issue a huge disclaimer and a trigger warning. I will be talking about topics related to CSA, which stands for Child Sexual Abuse, CSEM, which stands for Child Sexual Exploitation Material, MAPS, which stands for Minor Attracted People, aka Pedophiles, Trauma Art, various other fetishes, and generally sensitive and disturbing topics. Please proceed with caution. Viewer discretion is advised. To start this whole thing off, I will discuss an artist called Strawberry Milk, who I will be referring to as just Milk in this video. If you're not familiar with who she is and what she has done, don't worry, I got you. I will also be sharing with you a very shocking discovery I made on Twitter that truly disturbed me to the core. We will be going over what Loli and Shotakon is and the various implications that come from drawing sexualized illustrations of children. I will also share my opinions on the topic, so just know that this video will not be a lighthearted one. So again, proceed with caution. Just a last reminder before we start, please do not send any hate or harassment towards anybody I mentioned in this video. This video is meant to be informative and to start a discussion, not to start a witch hunt. So again, please don't find the artist that I discussed in here for the purpose of hate and harassment. Without any further ado, let's start the video. So you must be wondering who Strawberry Milk is and what's going on with all these trigger warnings. Shortly put, Milk is a trans woman who is an artist known for her explicit comics and illustrations depicting children engaged in sexual acts and scenarios. Milk has been in a lot of controversies because of her choice to draw specifically prepubescent minors getting sexually abused as well as drawing children in fetish pieces, doing obscenities such as drinking urine and having sex with their toys. Just to clarify, Milk has specifically called her own art drawn porn and she has also mentioned that the characters she draws draws are young children, sometimes even kindergarten age according to some of her illustrations which I won't be showing on here. So there's no debate that she's creating art depicting specifically children in erotic and sexual situations. It's important to mention that Milk also profits off of selling prints, comics, merch and commissions off of these sensitive materials that she creates. It's no secret that she has been making a profitable business out of being an artist who draws quote unquote difficult art and she prides herself on that as well. If I wasn't clear before, I want to establish that Milk is a full-grown adult who consciously chooses to draw and profit out of creating and distributing Shotakon and Lolicon artworks and comics. The issue that lies here is the justification that Milk gives to rationalize creating such troubling content and profiting out of it. Before going forward, however, I want to explain what Lolicon and Shotakon actually is. According to Wikipedia, Shotakon is a Japanese slang describing an attraction to young boys. It refers to a genre of manga and anime where impupipescent male characters are depicted in a suggestive or erotic manner. Lolicon, on the other hand, is a Japanese slang describing an attraction to young girls. It refers to a genre of manga and anime where impupipescent female characters are depicted in a suggestive or erotic manner. The term Lolicon is a reference to Vladimir Nabokov's book Lolita, in which a middle-aged man becomes sexually obsessed with a 12-year-old girl. It was first used in Japan in the 1970s and quickly became used to describe erotic doujinshi, which means amateur comics, portrayals of young girls. In case some of you didn't know what the word prepubescent means, it's basically a child that hasn't hit puberty yet, so usually that means they are under the age of 13. I want you guys to fully understand these terms and what they mean so you can get the full context of everything discussed in this video. 
Milk has gone on record to say that she creates CSEM, which stands for Child Sexual Exploitation Material, in the name of trauma art. She claims that her art is meant to be a vent because she is a survivor of CSA, which stands for Child Sexual Abuse. Now I want to be clear on the distinctions between real CP and drawn CP because they are different and also hold very different implications. One of them being CSAM which stands for Child Sexual Abuse Material which includes real life children getting molested and exploited for the profit and pleasure of others. People refer to this as CP or Child Pornography. CSEM in turn stands for Child Sexual Exploitation Material and it's usually created digitally or drawn by hand. It doesn't include molesting a real life child to be able to create it. It's still extremely harmful however and I will discuss why later on in this video. These materials include the likes of Lolicon and Shotacon illustrations and comics. I'm unsure if it also includes other media that eroticizes young children like the book Lolita by Vladimir Nobakov, but if you guys have any answers to that, let me know in the comments. I will be referring to what Milk creates as CSEM going forward from here. There have been debates on whether it makes you a pedophile if you create CSEM and Milk has been accused of being one because of the nature of her comics. Now I did mention before that her excuse or reasoning for creating that type of content was because it's trauma art, but I have a couple of qualms with that excuse. If I were to explain what trauma art is though, it's basically an evidence-based therapeutic healing method that helps a number of different mental health conditions including PTSD, trauma, schizophrenia, and even and depression through self-expression and art. It's a valid treatment that is usually created in the presence of a licensed therapist or a mental health professional. According to an article on Healthline, common treatments for PTSD include talk therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy called CBT. These therapy models aim to desensitize survivors by talking and expressing feelings about the traumatic event. However, people experience PTSD through memory, emotion, and the body. Talk therapy and CBT may May not be enough to address all of these areas. That's when art therapy comes in. For PTSD recovery, art helps process traumatic events in a new way. Art provides an outlet when words fail. As you heard from that article, trauma art is very personal and sensitive in nature. It should be made with a presence of a licensed mental health professional and also stay between the patient and the professional. Even if one creates it on their own as a coping mechanism, it's still not something that should be shared to the public, especially if it includes abuse of a minor or explicit material regarding said minor. I'm well aware, however, that works of that nature have been released to the public before, but I personally think that sharing art depicting children, even if it's your memories, in sexual exploitative ways, should not be released to anyone since it's most likely going to be consumed by predators, or it's going to actively contribute to the normalization or sometimes even glorification of the acts presented in said materials. So milk drawing this type of sensitive material as a healing method through trauma art wouldn't be an issue if she did in actively sell, promote, and share it to the public. Also, there is a difference in presenting child abuse in your work in a way that doesn't glorify, sexualize, or normalize it. For example, in the movie Precious, the main character was being molested by her parents, but the way it was presented never sexualized, glorified, or normalized it. It was brutally honest of how disturbing and traumatic those acts were and the effects it had on the main character. Milk, on the other hand, doesn't do that. The way she draws her characters in cutesy, stylized way, enjoying and even yearning for sexual interactions, is nothing short of glorification. She also draws her characters in various fetishes and sex acts as material to get off on, rather than commentary or anything deeper. One example of this would be the time she tweeted that she wanted adult Pokemon to take care of their little immature kid trainers and then proceeded to draw explicit porn of this scenario. There is nothing therapeutic about drawing smut of your favorite TV characters other than just fulfilling your own weird desires and kinks. Milk is infamous for such materials and this is even more prevalent on her Twitter. She actively promotes map ideologies which strengthens the pedo accusations against her. I actually want to read some out for you so you understand what I mean. She liked tweets that said the following and I quote Tired, aging up characters for fire to make your porn more socially acceptable. Wired, just drawing the damn characters as they are and not giving a fuck. 
inspired aging down characters and turning all your faves into cute shotas and lollies another thing she liked little girls should make out that's what i think she also tweeted the following and i quote i've been informed that my work is very sexually attractive from these tweets, I'm sure you can understand why people are convinced that she in fact is a pedophile and is using trauma art as a cloak to get away with drawing explicit materials of children for her own pleasure and profit. I can't personally comment on what she is or isn't, but I can say that it's super odd that she posts art that is clearly meant to be pornographic material of children for the purpose of gaining likes, followers, and profit out of. I don't understand how she's unable to recognize how damaging art like that can truly be. If it really is trauma art, it should not be posted online because of the negative effects that art like that can have and who that type of stuff is actually pandering to. I'll explain to her and for anyone else watching why CSEM such as Lolicon and Shotacon animations, illustrations and comics are so damaging even if they are just ink on paper. Lolicon and Shotacon are materials that were specifically made to pander to pedophiles. While CSEM isn't as bad as real life children getting hurt, they are still harmful in actively normalizing the sexualization of children which in turn potentially clears and preps the room for real life children to get hurt. According to the fact sheet on CSEM, although virtual child pornography does not involve harm to a real child, it's still dangerous because it may be used in grooming real children for exploitation. It sustains a market for child sexual abuse images and it enables a culture of tolerance for the sexualization of children and cultivates demand. As you heard, Loli and Shotokon is often used in grooming children for exploitation and this is a fairly common tactic that predators use even to this day. Loli and Shotokon also normalize the sexual exploitation of children which can cause the person consuming that type of content to want to go ahead and search for real CP and even find a real child to molest. You might think I'm overreacting and reaching when I say that, but alas, it has happened before and will continue to happen in the future if these types of contents are allowed to be produced and distributed everywhere. According to a journal on Lolicon, released by the author Shari Savage, Lolicon anime genre remained unchallenged until the year 1993 when a young man named Miyazaki Tsutomu was arrested for the molestation and subsequent murder of four girls between the ages of 4 and 7. Miyazaki had over 5,700 videos of Lolicon anime and his consumption of such images became the catalyst for a nationwide push to banish harmful anime. So my point is that it's very common for Loli and Shotakon content to be found in the computers of predators. So to say they have no effect on anyone who decides to cross over into becoming a real life child monster is just simply false and naive. Milk has completely disregarded all that and still prides herself for the content that she creates. When she was criticized for the CSEM she produces, she pushed back against those claims and said that it's wrong to ever call a trans woman a pedophile in any circumstances. This was frustrating to many because Milk was being criticized for valid reasons but she chose to ignore those reasons and accuse people calling her out for being transphobic. Because of Milk's explicit and sensitive content, she has been deplatformed from multiple websites in hopes of stopping her from profiting off of the obscene materials she creates and sells. She used to sell her comics and illustrations on Etsy, Coffee, and Patreon, but after people reported her, the platforms decided to delete Milk's content from their websites as that type of material broke the terms and services of those websites. I think she lacks self-awareness on the fact that the type of art she creates is highly controversial and even illegal in some countries so it's completely understandable if these platforms like patreon don't want to have someone selling CSEM on their website I want to hear what Michelle has to say about all this so let's hear her out you know it is one thing to draw adult characters in a childish way you know giving them a pacifier or draw them in cute children clothes for aesthetical reasons like DDLG art for example where you can clearly see that it's just age play king art the drawings are of adult people just dressed up as kids. But when I look at Strawberry's fetish art of actual prepubescent little children, it is abundantly clear to me that this is, in my opinion, pedophilic porn art. Now, I know that the artist was a victim of child abuse and the defenders would say that her explicit borderline pedophile art is just her coping with her trauma. 
Well, let me get one thing clear first then. For all the mentally healthy people who don't know how sexual trauma affects the sex life, it's not that hard to understand. If female children get sexually abused or touched, they most likely are gonna develop certain kinks later on in their life. If boys get sexually abused or touched, they most likely develop a sexual obsession or a sexual repulsion or other dominating sexual kinks. If parents were abusive or even neglective, they develop a degrading kink. So reportedly, there's no trauma that can cause someone to become an actual pedophile, meaning when pedophiles are born and when they were younger, yes, they still can get molested, but that doesn't mean that the molestation made them to be pedophiles, because it is a serious mental illness. You have to be born this way. Your brain is wired differently from other quote-unquote normal people. People who just happen to experience sexual assault when they were younger and developed a DDLG or a BDSM fetish are just normal people trying to cope with their trauma. They are not, and I repeat, not attracted to my Minors. Again, these two things are two completely different cases. Pedophilia is not a kink, it's not a fetish, and most certainly it's not part of the LGBTQ community. It is simply a mental illness that needs to be taken care of. So first of all, people really need to realize that there is a clear difference between DDLG art slash kink and actual pedophilic art slash pedophilia. Those who are coping with their own trauma and expressing it through vent slash trauma art are just trying to reclaim the control that they had once lost when they experienced abuse. Pedophilic art, aka strawberries art, is just pedophiles enjoying being pedophiles. Now before anyone accuses me for defamation, for the record, this is just my opinion, obviously I don't know her brain, but when I look at her comics or her weird takes on minors on Twitter, it just feels like she is, that she is actually turned on by children. What are some exceptions where you think vent art and trauma art could be acceptable? You know, I always thought that actual then slash trauma art should at least look like it's personal. You know, I for example really relate and enjoy trauma art where the character or the story that the victim draws resembles themselves and their own story in a tasteful way. I really feel alienated by art which just looks borderline pornographic where rape is depicted as an enjoyable thing for minors to like. You know, it's hard to answer that question because art is extremely subjective and I know that there are probably hundreds of people already disagreeing with me and that's okay but personally I think trauma slash vent art should never cross the taboo line of pleasurable enjoyable pedophilia. What are some of the dangers of allowing children to be sexualized in comics and art media? Men are already kind of wired to find younger looking girls to be more attractive. Men usually tend to marry women who are 10 to 15 years younger than them, look more youthful than them, etc. So I don't know if media had a play in this or if this is just a genetic evolutionary trait that all men have, but depicting children or lowly characters as sexy in media will make this issue worse and it will only drive men to objectify girls even more and subconsciously it will send them the message that it's okay to lust over minors because they look quote unquote sexually ripe. Do you think child characters in comics and anime can be aged up in fan art? Oh, I certainly think so, and they should definitely do that, especially when they're drawing fetish porn art of them, you know, because then at least it looks like they're in the legal age to participate in whatever situation the artist puts them in. So I personally don't have anything against aging up child characters when it comes to fan art, but don't do the opposite where you age them down and put them in weird sexual positions. Like, don't draw illegal shit, please. As Michelle mentioned, aging up fictional characters is something that is an option if someone wants to draw their favorite characters in lewd ways. I had more to say about Milk, but while I was writing my script, I noticed that she had wiped her Twitter and left social media because of cyberbullying, which I don't condone by the way. Now, I unfortunately did discover something super disturbing before Milk deactivated their social medias, which is what I would like to go over next. As I was saying earlier, I discovered something super weird before Mil decided to deactivate their Twitter. So I was going over her tweets with the intention of getting screenshots. That's when I went ahead and looked into her replies, likes, follows, and followers. 
When I looked into the account that Milk follows, I quickly discovered a plethora of public map supporter accounts, Lolicon and Shotacon artists, as well as straight up Toddlercon artists being the bulk of who she follows, likes and interacts with. I don't even want to go into explaining what Toddlercon is, but I'm pretty sure you can guess by now. You can see the same pattern with the accounts who follow Milk. Aside from some aunties, most of the accounts following Milk are self-proclaimed maps, Shota and Lolicon artists. The deeper I looked into what kind of tweets Milk has liked, the more disturbed I got because I discovered a cesspool and a huge community of map and pedo artists based on Twitter. I found a thriving community of proud map artists posting art of literal babies in horrible explicit scenarios and a supportive fan base of predators, maps and miners that were hyping that type of content up. I knew Twitter was a weird place, but I never expected that there would be accounts with over 31,000 followers that were living their best life posting Lolicon and Shotacon porn to their huge map following. If I were to read the bios of some of these accounts that followed Milk, we had... I'm a proud porn addict and I love hentai, especially Lolicon and Toddlercon. I'm a map ally. Hi, I'm 14. Shy, Shota, memes, hentai, map supporter, 14 meaning their age is 14. And this is somebody Milk is actually following. A 16-year-old artist from the Philippines. Lifelong, non-exclusive, hashtag map. One of the accounts that Milk followed and liked was an artist that drew toddler con, which again means exactly what you think it does. And they had this on their bio. My character is no map, just not into muscular person. The craziest thing about this bio is that it says that their characters are not maps and they are just not into muscular people. And when you look at their stuff, they post literal babies that are under the age of 4 years old engaged in erotic and sexual acts and scenarios. Like, I... Like, I won't be showing you guys any of this stuff because of the sensitive nature of it all, but literally you can't make this shit up. Like, <laughs> what? I even found an art challenge that this map artist used during September called Shota Timber and was highly disturbed on how many of these map artists actually joined on this challenge to create fetish pornography depicting little boys. Please do not look this hashtag up on Twitter because it's actually disgusting and contains these obscene materials. I debated myself on if I should even mention it at all, but I want to bring awareness on how huge this map art community on Twitter actually is and how widely accepted this type of content is to these artists who are in that side of Twitter. When I started making this video, I simply wanted to discuss Milk and her antics on Twitter, but I soon discovered that it wasn't just her engaging in these types of behavior. There is an active and thriving community of like-minded people who support, produce, encourage and glorify the creation of these obscene materials without any sort of regulations. I would have ended this video with a plea for Twitter to do something about these horrific exploitative accounts on their website. But thankfully I don't have to do that since Twitter actually recently came out with new policies banning this type of content from their website. The new Twitter child sexual exploitation policy said the following. Twitter has a zero tolerance towards any material that features or promotes child sexual exploitation. Any content that depicts or promotes child sexual exploitation including but not limited to visual depictions of child engaging in sexually explicit or suggestive acts, illustrated, computer generated or other forms of realistic depictions of a human child in sexually explicit context or engaging in sexually explicit acts and promoting and normalizing sexual attraction to minors as a form of identity or sexual orientation. Obviously, there was more to that, so I'll leave a link to the whole policy update in my description, so if you want to read all of it, you can find it there. But I just read the ones relevant to this video. This all should technically speaking take care of the accounts that I spoke of earlier, but I actually went to check if Twitter has done anything about these accounts ever since this new policy came out, and unfortunately, they're still there, strong as ever. Not a single account has been affected by this new policy whatsoever. Even the toddler con accounts posting explicit art of babies are still there, completely fine and unaffected, so I'm confused why these new policies have been put out if they aren't going to be implemented. With all of that being said though, let's move on to the last part of this video and wrap everything up with my final thoughts.
Based on everything so far, I feel like I was pretty clear on why I think Lolicon and Shotacon is harmful and why creating and distributing such content is problematic. Just to go over it once more, content that sexualizes children, even when it's drawn, is actively contributing to the normalization of the act of sexualizing children. The effects of this normalization can lead to people consuming that type of content to lose empathy towards children and in turn start objectifying them as sex objects rather than actual innocent children. Other effects of this could be that if a child comes across this type of content, they could end up self-objectifying themselves which leads to various other issues in that child's life. According to a study by the American Psychological Association on the effects of sexualization of girls and women, they found that self-objectification correlated with both body shame and appearance anxiety. For girls as young as 12 and 13 years of age, viewing oneself primarily from the perspective of an observer and empathizing with features like attractiveness or sex appeal with the respect to one's body were related to higher levels of anxiety about appearance and feelings of shame. In addition to leading to the feelings of shame and anxiety, sexualizing treatment and self-objectification can generate feelings of disgust towards one's physical self. While this is the aftermath of media that sexualizes girls, there is also evidence that shows that loli and shotakon is often used as a grooming method by predators. While it can't be proven that those who create and consume loli and shotakon content are pedophiles, files 100%. It certainly looks sus, and unless that person is specifically creating trauma art, what other purpose would they have for creating that type of content if not for the purpose of either profit or getting off on it? I personally agree with what this specific prosecutor said. Let me read it out for you. In the words of one prosecutor, imagine an offender who spends several hours every night on the internet enjoying and fantasizing to images of children being sexually abused and congregating with like-minded people in these trading communities where they validate and normalize each other's behaviors and desires. Assume that he does this several times a week for several months, maybe even years, which is not at all unusual. Common sense tells you that his five-year-old daughter sleeping in the bedroom next door is at a great risk, particularly if the images he collects involves girls in that age bracket. Can we say for certain that he will act out his fantasies on the little girl? No, we can't, but there is a real cause for fear for her safety. So shortly put, I definitely agree that people who dabble in creating and consuming such obscene materials should definitely be put on the FBI watch list just in case. I already went over why I don't think trauma art that contains CSEM should be shared to the public, so I won't go over it again. At the end of the day, the main points I want everyone to take from this video is that though drawn CSEM is not as harmful as real CP, it's still extremely problematic and deprimental overall. It should be stopped at all costs and honestly, I think it shouldn't even be legal. In some European countries, the possession of loli and shotakon content is a jailable offense and I think America and Japan should definitely catch up. Now I did ask Michelle if Japan's low age of consent, which is 13 by the way, has anything to do with the high amounts of loli and shotakon materials being produced there and this is what she had to say. I don't know because first my obvious answer was yes, knowing that the age of consent is at 13 in Japan, it definitely has to have influenced something, right? But then again, if you compare the jurisdiction in my country, Austria, or better yet in many European countries, the age of consent is at 14. It's just a one year difference. So I don't think that it's entirely fair to put blame on Japan's popularity of Shota or Loli content on the low age of consent. I personally think it's more of a culture thing. Japanese people in general seem to be a lot less offended by extreme fetishes, illegal acts of paraphilia such as bestiality, necrophilia, pedophilia or just gory torture art or weird porn in general. I'm honestly really fascinated by how contradicting Japan's outlook on anything sexual is, so I think it's a different mentality type of a problem. Thank you so much Michelle. If you want this discussion to continue, hop on Michelle's channel called Shirley Samoy to hear more about a different artist who is equally if not worse than Milk. I'm also there giving my opinions on the topic, so go and give that video a watch too. I want to thank my patrons Empress Durden, B. Makias, Shannon, Rautava, 
and glitchy garbage. You all matter so much, especially when I cover heavier topics like this one which is bound to get destroyed by YouTube. So thank you so much. I drew Michelle who I'm collaborating with in this video, so let me know what you think of the art. What do you guys think of this topic? Should Lolicon and Shotacon be banned? What about trauma art? Should it be shared even if it includes CSEM? Did you agree with me? Did you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments.